All right, we're going to go ahead and get started now. Um, again, thank you so much for joining today's webinar series, Getting Started with Prisma Access. Today's topic will be onboarding your remote networks. So let me go ahead and let you guys know um, what to expect in the next 60 minutes. Um, we will go ahead and get started on how to plan for and deploy Prisma Access for remote networks and branch offices, configuring Prisma Access for remote networks and branch offices, Stay, staying secured, please keep Prisma Access updated, and we will end today's session with a Q&A session. I um, just wanted to remind everyone that at any point that you have any questions, please feel free to enter your questions on the Q&A chat and we'll make sure to address those questions. And also wanted to remind you all of an upcoming webinar of next week, which will be best practices for routing with Prisma Accesses, which will happen on Wednesday, August 18 at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So a quick intro on your Prisma Access customer success tour, guys, will be um, getting started with your customer success managers, myself, Wendy, and Anil, your Prisma Access customer success engineer, Karam Shasad, and also wanted to let everybody know that if you wanted to access any of this information or documentation, you can access that on Tech Docs and our Palo Alto live community. So where we are in the onboarding journey. At this point, the following should be completed. At this point, we should have completed the, these prerequisites, which is Prisma Access Cortex Data Lake licenses should be activated. HA Panorama setup should be done. Your cloud services plugin should be installed. Your ports used in Panorama should be added to allow list, including your latest preferred Panorama PanOS installed. Your Prisma Access APIs should be allowed. Your TCP ports and FQDN setups should be uh, for Cortex Data Lake. Your device groups and templates should be in place. Your service infrastructure subnet setup should be completed. And one service connection setup should be completed. And of course, your mobile user setup completed, if applicable, of course. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to my colleague, Karam, who will be going over your key Prisma Access concepts. Thank you, Andy. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. Thanks for joining uh, today's session and sorry for uh, waiting to some technical issues. <clears throat> Before onboarding to the remote networks or the, or the branch networks, let's have a look at some of the key uh, points before you uh, plan your remote networks deployment. So as you, your business scales and your offices locations becomes geographically distributed, Prisma Access for Networks allows you to speedily onboard your remote network locations and deliver the best in breed uh, security for your users. It also offers a convenient option that remove the complexity in configuration and managing devices at every remote location. So to connect your remote network location to the Prisma Access, you can use Palo Alto Networks Connection Firewall or a third-party IPsec compliant device, including SD-WAN, that can establish an IPsec tunnel to the service. Prisma Access for Networks allows you to pick the geographic location where you want to deploy Prisma Access to secure your remote network location. So some of the important point service connection. So if your remote network locations require access to the infrastructure in your corporate headquarters for authentication of users or uh, to email enable access to the critical network assets, so you must create a service connection. Uh, I have talked about one of our previous webinar detailed about how you can deploy a service connection and what are the important points while you are planning for a service connection you should consider. And also uh, for the mobile users, uh, webinar, which was last week, we also discussed why service connection is important for you. Uh, if you have MUs and RNs, so you should deploy service connection. So, so same thing applies here. So if the remote network location is an autonomous and does not need access to the infrastructure or at other locations, um, you don't need to set up the service connections unless you have the mobile users and you need access for, from the mobile user to remote network locations. <clears throat> Bandwidth allocation per compute location, you can plan 
your bandwidth for your remote networks location at an aggregate level per compute location. Each location you onboard has a corresponding compute location for which the bandwidth is allocated. You allocate bandwidth per compute location instead of per location. So the aggregate bandwidth model is available for all new Prisma access who are onboarded with 1.8 cloud service plugin with 1.8 and for existing deployments that do not have any remote networks onboarded before upgrading to 1.8. So if you have an existing Prisma access deployment that has onboarded remote networks and then you onboard it to 1.8 so aggregate bandwidth feature is not available for you so it is only available for the customers who have onboarded the remote network after upgrade to 1.8 or just deploy started their deployment being a new customer from cloud service plugin 1.8 and if you are Selecting this aggregate bandwidth feature, secure inbound access for remote network sites, and quality of service for the remote networks is not available at the moment in Prisma Access. All locations you onboard share the allocated bandwidth for that compute location. For example, you need to onboard for branch offices using remote networks in Singapore, Thailand, or Vietnam locations. All these locations map to Asia Southeast compute location. So if you allocate 200 Mbps bandwidth to the Asia Southeast compute location, Prisma Access divides this 200 Mbps bandwidth between the four branch offices you onboard in that location. If you also add location in Hong Kong, uh, you know that the Hong Kong map to the Hong Kong compute location, and then you would need to add more bandwidth to that compute location. You can specify uh, the bandwidth of minimum 50 Mbps per compute location. And the Prisma access will dynamically allocates the bandwidth based on the load or demand per, uh, per location. <clears throat> Templates. You need templates, parent device groups. You will configure while selecting it. If you have already using the next gen firewall, you have your templates. You can import the templates um, and use the same IP sectional configurations. Um, IP sub subnets in order for Prisma access to route traffic to your remote networks, you must provide routing information for the subnetworks that you want to secure using Prisma access. Uh, you can do this several ways. You can either define a static route to each subnetwork. As um, or you can configure the BGP between your service connection location and the Prisma access, or you can use the combination of both as well. Um, it may be convenient um, to use a static routes if you have just a few subnetworks in your network, the remote network or branch net network. But in large deployment with many remote networks and with overlapping uh, subnets, BGP will enable you to scale more easily. IPsec termination nodes. IPsec termination nodes allows you to associate remote network with compute location. As I mentioned uh, earlier, if you have enabled the aggregate bandwidth feature, then you see the IPsec termination nodes applies in that case. Uh, when you onboard a remote network, you can select the IPsec termination node for that remote network. Uh, and you can specify a maximum of 250 remote networks per IPsec termination nodes. Let's have a look into the uh, quick demo. Demonstration. We're going to go through the process of onboarding a remote network. The process of onboarding the network is simple, but there are some other things that we need to do ahead of time so that as we go through this onboarding process, other resources that we need are already configured. I'm on Panorama Configuration and remote networks. The first thing I'm going to do is click on the gear to the right of settings. You need to choose the parent device group for where the device group for remote networks will appear within the panorama hierarchy. Under templates, you manage your Prisma access template stacks, not under panorama and templates, but rather here 
under the cloud services configuration. Because I have made a remote network, it has already created something called the remote network template. This is something that is automatically created. But I could also add other templates that I had created into the template stack and manage that template stack here. So here is where I manage my template and template stacks for my remote network template stack. And here is where I specify what device group will be the parent device group for my remote network. The overlapping subnets option will be discussed later in the slide presentation. I'm going to click on OK to close out of this. The next option that I have to the right here is zone mapping. I'm going to click on the gear over to the right hand side and it asks me to map my zones. Remember, Prisma Access only has the concept of untrusted and trusted zones. While I may have zones that already exist within Panorama, from a security policy application perspective, the zone structure in Prisma Access is simplified to trusted and untrusted. I'm going to leave my internet zone in the untrusted bucket, and I'm going to move my extranet and my usernet zones over as trusted zones within my Prisma Access configuration and click on OK. The other thing that I need to be ready for is I need to have my VPN tunnel configuration correct in order to set up my remote network. I've already created these artifacts, but let's review them now. I'm going to go over to the Network tab under Template. And here, I have created a Boston Gateway. I'll open this up. I've named it Boston Gateway. I've specified my Ike version. I've said that my peer address or the IPsec device that is out at the out at the Boston location will be dynamic. He's not going to have a static IP address. I've set up my pre-shared authentication key and how the Prisma Access side of the IPsec tunnel will identify this remote IPsec device at the Boston location by FQDN email address, and I have specified that here. I'm going to click on OK, and now I'm going to take a look at my IPsec tunnels, which I've also configured. I've created the Boston RN IPsec tunnel. I've used my Boston gateway. I have specified IPsec crypto profile of default as I have done this configuration. I'm not configuring proxy IDs because I'm assuming that the IPsec device that is at the Boston location supports route-based VPN tunnels. But if, for instance, I was making a VPN tunnel to a device that required proxy ID configuration, or required a crypto map configuration, here with my proxy IDs, I could override the concept that the Palo Alto Prisma Access environment uses the universe as the set of addresses on both sides of the tunnel and relies upon routing to select the interesting traffic. network. I've got my templates and my device groups properly configured. I have my zone mapping done and I've done the work to configure my IPsec tunnel on the Prisma Access side so that the Boston location can initiate its tunnel up. Next I'm going to go down here to add and I'm going to give this a name. This name is important. This is the name that's going to show up in the log files associated with traffic originating from the Boston network. While I might have used zone names in my policy construction, the name here is what will show up in the log files under the zone field, not the actual zone names. Under the bandwidth option, 
I can select the symmetric bandwidth that I will have allocated to the Boston remote network. This is going to give me the same speed from the Boston network as well as down to the Boston network. For my location, I want to choose a location that is geographically close to the Boston environment. Okay, This is going to give me the fastest speed that I can get in my connection to the Boston environment, reducing latency of literally the distance of fiber that traffic has to flow across. Now, I'm going to choose the IPsec tunnel that we just reviewed that I've already created for this. I'm going to choose the Boston Remote Network VPN tunnel. Finally, I need to set up my routing. This is going to tell the Prisma Access environment what is in the Boston network, what addresses exist down there, okay, if people try and connect to resources that exist in the Boston network. So I'm going to click on Add here, and I'm going to say that the 172.168.50 50.0 slash 24 network lives at the Boston environment. Finally, I can configure a secondary IPsec tunnel. This would be an active passive tunnel configuration with the tunnel that I've configured here being the active and this being the backup or secondary tunnel. This is that if I had dual ISPs and if I had a problem with one of those ISPs, then I could fail over to the second one if that tunnel were to go down. That's what this configuration option here is for. And finally, I'm going to click on OK. So now I've configured my template and my device group settings. I've mapped my zones. I've configured the IPsec tunnel information within the Prisma Access Cloud, and I have set up this onboarded network. The last thing that I need to do is come up here and click on Commit, and I can go through my Commit and Push. Commit, save these settings to Panorama. Push propagates them to the Prisma Access Cloud environment. I'm going to click on Commit and Push, and when it brings me in here, I'm going to click on Edit Selections. Because here, under the Prisma Access tab, I can say where what changes I want to push up into the Prisma Access Cloud. And then finally, I could click on OK to propagate this information into Prisma Access. At this point, Prisma Access would be ready for the Boston location to initiate the VPN tunnel up to it to, go, to complete the process of onboarding my first remote network. Thank you. Let's, thanks for watching a quick demo. Now let's have a look into the each uh, step of the configurations involved onboarding a remote network. So step number one, <clears throat> you will log in into your panorama. And by the way, if you are managed, all I'm talking about right now here for the panorama managed onboarding, if you have cloud managed and you, um, and you want to onboard remote networks, then you don't need templates in the device groups. The cloud managed customers, you, you can just create IPsec tunnels um, and then onboard remote network. That's a very simplified uh, process. You don't need to create the parent device groups, template and template stack is nothing all you, you need it. <clears throat> Log into your panorama, select the cloud service plugin go to the configurations tab remote networks and click on the settings as we saw in the demo and from there you can select a template so you can add any template that contain the configuration you want to push to prisma access for networks for example if you have existing templates that contain your zone configurations or ip sec tunnel ic gateways or crypto profile settings uh, you can add them to the predefined remote network template stack to simplify the onboarding process and you can select move up and down by selecting in, in your uh, tab there and then select the parent device group for the prisma access you can select as an existing device group or you can use a shared you can see here as you know you will click on the settings gear icon and it will open up this template you can select here the template we have added the template test template here the remote networks templates by default creating 
<coughs> and um, you can select here the parent device group and the overlapping subnets if you have. So as a general rule, you cannot have any overlapping subnets within a Prisma access deployment. Um, that's the subnet for all remote networks location use uh, your service connections and your Prism access from mobile user IP address pool cannot overlap. Um, however, in some circumstances, you can not avoid having an overlap in uh, subnets. For example, your organization has two WAN links that you want to combine for higher bandwidth throughput in a single remote network location and an active active WAN deployment. You want to configure an overlapping subnet Deploy, uh, deployment by design. The organization uses the same network topology for an IP assignments, or you acquired, a you acquired a company that uses the subnets that overlap. So in that case, Prisma Access allows you to onboard remote network locations with overlapping subnets as long as you select overlap subnets checkbox in the section here while onboarding the remote networks. Remote network connections with overlap subnet will support only the outbound internet. You can bypass these limitations by configuring the source NAT on the on-premises um, Palo Alto next generation firewall, if it is present, or any network device, router, switch, or SD-WAN device that connects to the Prisma access tunnel used for remote network connection. Configure a DNS proxy settings for your remote networks. This is an optional step. Prism Access allows you to specify the DNS servers to resolve both domains that are internal to your organization and external domains. If you do not specify any settings, Prism Access does not proxy DNS requests for remote networks. You can go to the remote uh, network device groups, select the pol uh, policy security and add the security policy rule with an application of DNS and an action of allow to allow the DNS traffic. Without a security policy rule to allow DNS traffic, DNS resolution does not occur. So if you configure Prisma access to proxy the DNS request from your remote networks, update the DNS settings on all the endpoints in that network. You can add uh, one or more DNS boxy settings with the following internal domains, or regional, or, or the global, and, um, ex and external domains by selecting in this section. Zones, you create a zones in one of the templates, which uh, networks, go to the network tab, and map zone reference in the existing templates you added in the stack, as trusted or untrusted. On Panorama, policy rules are defined in device groups and zones are defined in templates. So you need to make sure that you added the templates and those templates are referenced the zones, including your policy rules to that template stack. On Palo Alto Net Network Selection Firewall, security policy is enforced between zones which map to physical or virtual interfaces on the firewall. But as a Prisma access for networks, it has only two zones, trust and untrust. So you need to map any zone with traffic bound to the internet, including your sanctioned SaaS application as untrust, and all the internal zones as trust. By default, all of the zones in Prisma access for networks template stacks are classified as untrusted zones. So if you have not defined zones in or if the templates in the remote networks do not have zone configuration, you can go and add them when you push the policy for the Prisma access. You can add them from the trust. You can go to the zone section, click on this icon and add to the trust and trust as we just uh, saw in the demo. If you are on as i mentioned in one of the previous slides if you have onboarded your remote networks after upgraded to 1.8 or you have just a brand new deployment starting from cloud service plugin 1.8 you will see this tab bandwidth allocation 
for the customers who have already deployed their remote networks prior to 1.8, 1.7, or 1.6, they will not be able to see this uh, uh, bandwidth allocation tab. Click here on the icon. And then you will see it will give you the option for bandwidth allocation. You can enter the bandwidth allocation you want for each of your compute location that is associated with the Prism access location. You onboard it. Um, to verify the bandwidth you entered, select the check mark next to the bandwidth amount. For example, you have 2000 here. Click the check marks here. And then <clears throat> specify, you can specify the uh, band minimum of the bandwidth 50 Mbps. You can just okay. You can create a configuration that your remote networks connection use. After selecting this bandwidth allocation, uh, you can select the BGP deployment for, the, for your IPsec uh, um, tunnel. And one, if if you are supporting the selecting this option, uh, aggregate bandwidth. QS and inbound secure internet access, those two features will not be supported. And one thing more, while selecting the routing options, you should see that you are creating the configuration for your remote networks, either with the ECMP load balancing or uh, with, with uh, the static. You can uh, select different options. You can make it to none, or you can use enable with the symmetric return also. <clears throat> Click add to the remote on the onboarding section. Click add and specify a name to identify as we, we just did a walkthrough. And then as we're talking about earlier, QS and ECMP. If you're selecting the ECMP, the QS is not supported with the ECMP load balancing. And static routes are not supported. You need BGP. If your deployment is using one of the IPsec tunnels for remote network connections or using static routes, select none for the ECMP load balancing. You can also enable with the symmetric return, you can specify up to four IP tunnels for the remote network connection, and you can use the same link for the return traffic also. So you can add the IP tunnel for the remote network connection and specify the values. You can uh, like enable the BGP, or you can also do summarize user routes before advertising. It, it will reduce the number of mobile user routes um, advertising over the BGP to your customer's uh, premises equipment, CPE, by summarizing them. Um, by default, the Prism Access advertises all the, the mobile user route and the IP address pools in block of slash 24. If you summarize them, Prism Access adver will advertise the pool based on the subnet you specified. Set the community, community string values, aggregate mobile user routes. You can advertise the default routes, or you can select the option to not advertise the Prisma access routes. Uh, advertise default routes will allow the Prisma access to advertise the default route for remote networks using eBGP. Um, you must publish the default routes before you make the selection. And if you're selecting do not advertise Prisma access routes, this will prevent the Prisma access BGP pair from forwarding routes into your organization's network. So by default, Prism Access advertises all BGP routing information, including local routes and all prefixes it received from other service connections, remote networks, mobile user subnets. Uh, if you're selecting this checkbox to prevent Prisma Access from sending any BGP advertisement, but still use BGP it, information, it receives to learn routes from other BGP. Since the Prisma access does not send BGP advertisement and you select this option, you must configure static routes on the on-premise equipment to establish routes back to the Prisma access. We will be going through a detailed BGP and the routing preferences and details in our next webinar next week. Um, so if you want to learn to know the details, how you can set up BGP routing preferences uh, for the Prisma access, Please do uh, sign up, uh, register for the uh, next week webinar and attend.
as I mentioned, you can up, add up to the four uh, IP signals if you're selecting the ECMP options. Um, you need to define the peer AS, peer I, uh, IP address with the BGP. <coughs> select. select the location in which the Prismac is will deploy the infrastructure. So, look at enter the bandwidth you want and then select the locations. Uh, Again, this compute location option is uh, not available for all the customers. So if you have not yet allocated bandwidth of compute location and you don't see the option, so it will not be available for you right now. You can, um, as soon as you select click on the location, it prompts you to enter the bandwidth. You can select the IPsec termination node and you can change the bandwidth of remote network connection after you onboard. Uh, with the exception of 1000 Mbps. Uh, um, and if you select this, uh, you will see that the preview option is also there. And if you're selecting the preview option choice, you need to change the bandwidth. And if you have a scanry van link at this location, enable the scanry van and make sure to create a unique IP signal for each remote network secondary van. A Prisma access does not support uh, reusing the same IP set tunnel for secondary van. If you use static routes, tunnel failover time is less than 15 seconds. Um, and if you're configuring the BGP routing and you have enabled the tunnel monitoring, the shortest default hold time determine the um, SPI security parameter indexes. Failing is the tunnel monitor, which removes all the routes to appear when it detects a tunnel and the failover is the 15 consecutive seconds. Animal um, routing to subnetworks or individual IP addresses. Uh, information in this section, Prisma Access uses this information to route requests to the appropriate sites. Network at each site cannot overlap with other IP addresses pools. And if you're selecting the BGP, enable the BGP here, define uh, the pair addresses, local addresses, and secrets, and confirm. And if you're required to enable the quality of service for remote network connection, you must specify a QS profile first and then um, add the, import the QS selecting here from the drop down menu, QS profile here. Um, you can create this QS profile to shape the QS EOS traffic for remote network and service connections and apply these profiles to traffic that you mark in the uh, band or security policies traffic that you. Um, you are already marked with an on-premises device. And for the further details regarding the, the QoS, you can uh, refer to our PanOS uh, admin guide where you can see that how you can configure the QoS profiles. Commit the configuration changes to the panorama and push the configuration out to the Prisma Access for Networks. You can select here commit will save the configurations locally in panorama and then push will send all these configurations uh, to the prisma access <clears throat> once you push all the configurations to the prisma access and perform these commits it will take some time and after that you will see the service ip address in the remote network status tab in the cloud service and in panorama tab you will go to cloud service plugin and remote network status you will see the service ip address this is the ip address you need to create remote ip sector with your on-premise network you will use this as a pair ip address to create uh, ip sector <clears throat> To secure the traffic at remote networks, you must create a security policy rule. Select policies, device group, in which you add policy rules. You can select remote network device groups or the parent device group that defining for the policies for these remote networks. Make sure that you do not define security policy rules to allow traffic from any zone to any zone. In the security policy rule, use the zones that you defined in your template. If a user on your network is denied access to some website, you can 
uh, report the success and you can see based on the security policy what we have defined and enable the log forwarding to the cortex data lake you um, make sure that you have created and that attach the log forwarding profile to each of the security policy rule you forward logs uh, you can go and check the, ob in the objects tab in your panorama select the appropriate device group and you will see uh, all the security policies make sure that log forwarding profile is attached okay <clears throat> after forming the tunnel on the on your on-premises network or uh, next and firewall any sd wan device and initiating a tunnel performing command you will see there the remote network status tab is showing green means tunnel is established the network is up and it will show you the allocated mbps bandwidth here and deployment status and if you're enabling aggregate bandwidth you can monitor the all the aggregate bandwidth the remote network bandwidth the consumption per site peak values thresholds all using prisma access insights you will be able to see in prisma access insights all those information uh, each particular lo uh, location per compute location all this uh, consumption and bandwidth values and you can verify the remote network connection bgp status also by clicking on the bgp status you will click here you will see uh, on the bgp status you will this will open up a window which shows the local ip address pair ips as and all those information and after in the last to confirm your deployment or progress status you go to log into into the panorama go to status in the cloud service tab you will see there if all the information is showing green your network status is shown green Conflict status is green, platform status is successful. It means all good. You have successfully onboarded your remote networks. And, and if this is like amber here, I'm showing yellow or any warning sign, you can click here and see further details what warning sign of error it's showing, uh, if any tunnel down, out of sync, or what sort of error it is. So that's it for the onboarding of remote network. You have successfully onboarded a remote network. Uh, for your Prisma access service and from here I will hand over to Anil. Over to you Anil. Hey, thanks a lot Karam. Folks, I hope that was useful and helpful to you in understanding how to manage your remote networks with Prisma access. Uh, I'm going to rush through this last piece. If you've been with us, you know the message here. We want you to stay updated. If we can go to the next slide. The most important message from my standpoint here is Prisma access 2.2 2.2 is around the corner. Uh, that plugin will need to be installed and uh, we, we require all our Prisma Access customers to be currently running um, Prisma Access Cloud Services plugin 2.1 preferred. Um, all this, if we can go to the next slide, is, is mentioned on our status page and we really highly recommend that someone, at least a distribution list from your organization, subscribe to updates. This status page gives you updates on any Palo Alto Networks that, uh, pr uh, pr product that we are supporting, including Prisma Access. So all your updates are available from here. Um, if we can go to the next slide, uh, we have a uh, all our documentation, including everything that Kuram covered today, is available on our technical documentation site. Highly recommend that that be referred to um, and do, do not download the PDFs. Make sure to look at the current content on the website. It's always being refreshed. If we can go to the next slide, our, including um, uh, another site that's just recently been refreshed is our live community site. So whether you're running the cloud managed brand new version of Prisma Access or the panorama managed familiar version of Prisma Access, you've got um, sections and content that guides you through every stage of your journey with Prisma Access, including all the content in advanced sections, such as integrate, scale, and optimize. Um, also on this site are recordings of previous Prisma Access customer success webinars and all kinds of content. So learn about that and you can find this recording from this webinar posted there in about a week. If we can go to the next slide, um, also on our live community site, and very important that we stay keep you updated. So guidance on Prisma Access software releases is really on our technical documentation site. That's where you want to go for Prisma Access specifically 
to understand that compatibility matrix of what you need to be running on your panorama and which version of the cloud services plugin is supported with that. Uh, that content is regularly updated by our subject matter experts from product management. So please do refer to that. Um, and that I think brings us to, well, one more, yeah, one more update and request. Prisma Access Insights is where you'll get first news of the upcoming Prisma Access 2.2. So please do subscribe to alerts and notifications and insights. That is where you'll get notified. This process will follow a very similar process to our previous rollouts in that you will be uh, required to make a selection of an initial location that will be upgraded. That location will be upgraded in a cannery upgrade process, monitored for about a week, after which all your other remaining Prisma Access locations will be upgraded. And that entire process will be driven through your interactions with Prisma Access Insights. Along the way, if you have any issues, we highly recommend that you reach out to our customer support team. Our world-class customer support team is standing by to help you if, you if something breaks and you need help in production. Uh, in addition, highly recommend that this site be examined for all the great tips and uh, articles on uh, how to resolve questions and issues uh, related to Prisma Access or any Palo Alto products really based on our uh, kind of body of experience managing customers that are using our products. Um, next up, Next Wednesday, August 18th, please join us at the same time. We'll have a very exciting pro, uh, brand new webinar for you on best practices for routing. So whether you're doing static routing, BGP routing, using hot potato or the like, you'll learn a lot in this next session next Wednesday. And it is somewhat of a um, digest, if you will, of one of our complete full length in-person education classes. So it's led by one of our trainers and it's a really good session. Highly recommend that you join us for that. And we've got a slew of other webinars coming after that, including one that just is general help tips and techniques for managing your Prisma Access deployment, getting started with Prisma Access and our Prisma Access SD-WAN, formerly known as CloudGenix. Uh, finally, uh, we'll wrap up with doing more with Prisma Access SSL decryption. Without SSL decryption, you do not have full visibility into the traffic that's traversing your network. So highly recommend that you improve your security by attending that webinar. Um, and bringing it all together is how do you have effective logging across uh, Prisma Access? And then how do you do effective reporting and monitoring of that data? So that's our uh, last of our scheduled sessions. We'll be following this up with more sessions to come. Final request, please do fill out the post webinar survey. We rely on your feedback uh, to let us know your interests and so we can prepare content that is helpful to you, our customers. If you have any questions, contact us at that email address that's on the screen, packsuccess at paloaltonetworks.com. We are standing by to help you and answer any questions that you might have about Prisma Access and your deployment. With that, we bring today's webinar content to a close and we'll answer any questions that you might have. Folks, if you can, please post any questions that you might have at this point in the Q&A session or raise your hand. We'll be happy to unmute you and allow you to speak and uh, just speak your question. Once again, as we wait for any questions or someone to raise their hand, I will mention that in about a week, we should have this webinar along with all our previous webinars. Our previous webinars are already there on the live community site. And so do take advantage of all the content that we are putting out there for your needs. Do let us know if there's something missing that we should address from your standpoint, and we'll be happy to work on that. And finally, if anyone has any questions or issues about the 2.1 preferred cloud services plugin, get those questions to us. 
we, we really need to make sure that all our customers are at least installed with a 2.1 preferred cloud services plugin in preparation for the release of uh, the 2.2 plugin, which will come with a data plane maintenance. So there will be some scheduled activities that will go with that 2.2 release. If you have any questions about any of that stuff, please do contact us or raise your hand and we'll be happy to answer them right now. All right, folks, if there are no further questions, we will bring today's session to an end. And I thank Kuram for, for uh, bringing us through all that content. Thank you for your attendance and look forward to seeing you next Wednesday on that great session on best practices for routing with Prisma Access.